stop what you're doing. If you've been using ChatGPT or any chatbot for that matter, you've definitely used the word rewrite at some point. Rewrite my essay to make it sound like I know what I'm talking about. Rewrite my company message so I don't sound like a prick. Rewrite my email so you don't say, I hope this email finds you well. These are all valid reasons, but what if I told you that using rewrite is actually giving you low quality results? Results that are boring, robotic, and unnatural. You wouldn't actually speak like half the garbage that it spits out. Yeah, it might work sometimes, but can we do better? From my experience, we can. And just by implementing these three simple tricks for describing your prompts, you can get infinitely better results almost instantly. I guarantee you, by the end of this video, you'll go from a prompting noob to a prompting master. And at the end, I'll even show you a really cool trick that will get these chatbots to rewrite the text in the exact style of your voice. So let's get into it. The problem with rewrite is that what you think the chatbot is gonna say versus what it actually creates are completely two different things. You typically want it to rewrite the content but make it better with some specific modifications. But most of the time, you just get responses that end up sounding horrible. And from my experience, using rewrite rarely works the way I intended it to be used. For the most part, it just spits out the same or slightly different information with some new words or phrases sprinkled in there to mix it up. And honestly, this is all crap. So how can we make it better? Just use words other than rewrite. It's literally that simple. But just think about it. This is a text prediction model. It predicts the next word based off the given prompt. This means if you use the same words over and over again, you're gonna get the same or similar responses that just end up sounding boring, unnatural, and robotic. So if you ask it just to rewrite the text in a particular way, it will just do that like it's done for every other kind of text. And it will be rewritten into similar styles of people who already put in similar prompts. But the issue is, using the same words get you the same similar types of responses. Instead of using rewrite, say amplify or clarify or adapt or glamorize or formalize or any other relevant word you can think of to give your prompt a unique touch. This will give the chatbot an entirely new keyword to base its prediction model off of, which in turn will get you results sounding much better and much more closer to what you're trying to get. So let's test this out with some of those examples I just mentioned. We'll say, write me an essay on the history of computers. Okay, so it gives a pretty generic essay on the history of computers. Lots of information here on transistors, Apple, Microsoft, smartphones and tablets, now machine learning, quantum computing. Okay, all that good stuff. Rewrite this and make it more. Uh, the narrative chronicling the progression of computers constitutes a profoundly intriguing odyssey spanning epochs. Okay, this is like a lot. As you can see, it's very similar to the original response that we had. All it's really doing is swapping a lot of the text and phrases around. But what if we say instead Instead. So we'll say formalize the original response to sound professional. So you can see we get a completely different essay than this one here. You can just see just by reading the initial paragraph, the narrative chronically in the progression of computers constitutes a profoundly intriguing odyssey spanning epochs. That is a lot of just word vomit. Each word is just really overpowering and it just is a lot of nonsense. But if we go down to our new prompt, formalize the original response to sound more professional, the historical trajectory of computers is a compelling narrative that spans epochs characterized by humanity's unyielding pursuit of scientific advancement. In my opinion, this first sentence here sounds a lot better than this first sentence here. You can tell by, look at all the words it's using in this first sentence. Like every word is on average like 10, 15 characters long. Whereas over here, I feel like the sentence structure is a lot easier to read and it actually has a bit of a flow to it as opposed to just word vomiting out an entire sentence. At the end of the day, this will kind of come down to personal preference, but from my experience, using different kinds of words instead of rewrite will get you much better responses. I've also made this cheat sheet here, which you can screenshot or visit on my site. And it's a bunch of different and new unique words to use instead of rewrite. That term is just so bland and vague and it doesn't really convey any specific kind of action the chatbot should take other than just produce the same thing again. You can really spice up your results by using these words and make copy that's actually fresh and engaging. But for the second tip to really take your prompts to the next level, you need to be intentional about the modifications you put on the end of your prompts. And if you combine this tip with the last tip, you can get some really, really good results. So for this, you wanna continue your prompt, but be very specific about what you want to actually happen when the chatbot responds to your message. From my experience, sometimes putting more is actually better because it's giving more keywords for the chatbot to parse through, which will then make it more likely to predict unusual patterns and ways of making text. So for instance, don't just say summarize this and make it more professional. Instead use summarize this and make it sound like it's coming from someone
someone who knows what they're talking about, about the particular industry and make it resonate with that particular audience. You need to add more keywords and phrases to your prompt and tell it the goal of what you ultimately want to achieve out of its response. If you have a paper that you want to make sound like it came from someone who knows what they're talking about, you've got to let the chatbot know you want a style of response from someone who knows what they're talking about. This will give the chatbot much better information when trying to predict words that fit with the persona you're trying to resonate with. So let's do another quick test and see the difference. So if I were to say, write me an essay on dolphins. Okay, so we have a nice little essay on dolphins. So what we can say instead is, so you can say I use the prompt, summarize this essay, but make it appeal to kids and make it exciting for them to learn about dolphins. And this prompt is so much better than just using rewrite this to make it sound better. Imagine a world under the sea where some of the coolest creatures live, dolphins. So yeah, you can see it's asking a lot of engaging questions using exclamation points. It uses very simple language like coolest gang ever. They have some nice comparisons here, like referencing underwater Olympics, things that people in this demographic can actually resonate with and it's not just a bunch of random words of things so now if i were to say rewrite the original response but make it for kids this in my opinion is a really generic intro it's only two sentences long and the second sentence just kind of goes on and on about how they're super smart tons of fun and need to stay safe but even if we compare this first paragraph here to the original one here like this is so much more personalized and creative and i think descriptive and more tailored than something like this which is just like a sentence and a half with just like did you know the brainy buddies of the sea like it's it's i don't know it just seems really dull but using specific prompts like this you can actually get some better and more engaging responses than if you were to just use simple prompts let me mention though that your prompts don't need to be one of a kind but by trying to add more uncommon language you can get more uncommon responses and therefore you can get better responses responses that exceed your expectations and bring back that magical feel that you had when chat gpt was once released also if you're getting any value out of this video whatsoever make sure to subscribe and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really, really does help out the channel and gets my videos shown to more and more people, which ultimately helps me create better and better videos. Lastly, let me show you a cool trick to get your copy sounding similar to the styles of your voice. This method will work with any chatbot that lets you input a file that goes along with your prompt. I've tested this on ChatGPT4 Code Interpreter and also a little bit with Bard, but basically what you wanna do is get some text that's been generated with ChatGPT or Bard, like how I've been doing just having it write random essays on whatever I can think of. And then make sure you have a copy of some kind of text, preferably that's similar to the kind of content that you're writing about, written in the tone and style of your voice. But what you wanna do is input this prompt based on the tone and writing style in the uploaded file. Create a style guide for a blog or publication that captures the essence of the file text tone. Emphasize engaging techniques that help the readers feel connected to the content. Now rephrase the paragraph below using those techniques. So for this, I'm going to be on ChatGPT4 as I'm recording this, they changed it to advanced data analysis, but it still lets you upload a file here. So we're all good. I'll put in a prompt, write me an essay on the impact of AI and make it shorter. So you can see the generated response is very typical of just a regular ChatGPT response, but we'll put in our prompt that I mentioned, and then we'll also upload. I have this medium document that I made on curation versus creation on AI, and then we'll just click on enter. So you can see I input in my prompt here. It came up with a style guide, which analyzed the tone, said to maintain and reflect and contemplative tone with personal anecdotes and experiences. Use a proactive statement or question. Begin with an introduction that sets the stage. Use simple and direct language. Avoid jargon. Visuals can be humorous, illustrative, or thought-provoking. And so then it goes ahead and then it rewrites our essay similar to the style guide that it just printed out for us. Remember the first time you held the paintbrush, that rush of potential, the myriad of possibilities on a blank canvas. Now we fast forward to today. We're on the brink of another revolution. One that's digital and powered by AI. This isn't just about machines doing tasks faster. It's about reshaping the way we see the world, much like that first brush strokes on canvas. So it goes into an imaginary world. It's not all rosy. However, there is a silver lining and then it asks a question. So as we stand at this crossroad, paintbrush in one hand and A on the other, it's worth asking what masterpiece will we create? Let's explore a future that's both innovative and humane. Great. So this is honestly a lot more thought provoking and interesting than just this boring five point listicle article that AI has created. So what we can even do now is take this style guide and we'll make a new chat window 
and will say, write me an essay on dogs in the modern world using this style guide. And I just copy and pasted exactly what it gave me before. And I'm also using this on ChatGPT 3.5 and click on enter. In the bustling landscape of the modern world amid screens and notification, there exists a steadfast companion that has traveled the epochs of time alongside humanity. In a world of buzz with rapid communication, it's ironically easy to feel disconnected. Dogs with their ability to sense moods and respond with an affectionate nuzzle offer us a lesson in genuine empathy. Great, this is honestly, such a better essay than I thought it was going to spit out. And this is on GPT 3.5, mind you. Like, this isn't anything crazy. But as I keep saying, coming up with unique ways to prompt ChatGPT is really how you can make the most out of this new technology. So those are my three tips and suggestions for you to create better prompts. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts and test these methods out and let me know what you think of them. But if you're still curious as to why ChatGPT specifically, in my opinion, isn't as good as it once used to be, check out this video here where I can convincingly explain that I know ChatGPT is in fact getting worse. And trust me, it's not what you think. So I'll see you guys over there.